What it do guys, Monjami here with another installment of my Will It Do series of videos where I take an older or niche piece of tech, I incorporate it into my life for about a week, and I give you guys my findings. Today's piece of tech comes to us from 2011 and is called the Sony Tablet P. Form factor is a little chunky, but it fits in your pocket like a larger smartphone these days. Weighing in at 13.12 ounces or 372 grams, it is still lighter than my Z2 tablet, but the latter is bigger and distributes its weight a lot better. It's got dual 5.5 inch screens at 1024 by 480 pixels at 206 ppi. The corners are sharp which isn't an issue for me when dual handing it, however when I am single hand using it, the corners tend to dig into my hand. The screen looks fine but isn't as clear as you'd like these days. Putting the two screens together makes a bigger single screen, but the experience isn't as good as you'd hope as pictures are sometimes distorted by the space between each screen. Exact screen usage from apps will be later discussed. You can angle the unit to just about any degree physically possible but I found myself habitually opening it to an 180 degree angle since it's the same as using any other tablet. For me to do otherwise had to be forced. The gimmick is supposed to be useful when using the tablet as an e-reader but I usually find one larger screen is better than two smaller ones. After a fresh factory reset you're running Android version 3.2.1 Honeycomb with a 4.0 ice cream sandwich update that apparently came out. Unfortunately since I got an AT&T model and I don't plan to pay for a plan I'm stuck in the honeycomb factory. I've tried the XDA forum for workarounds to get to the update, but after a few hours of trying I found such trials unfruitful. The UI isn't sluggish, but coming from newer devices you feel the difference. You can set the backgrounds as you'd expect. Notifications come from the bottom right corner, which makes sense and feels more of a PC than newer Android experience where such things come from the top. The unit has 4 gigs onboard storage with a dedicated micro SD slot that maxes out at 32 gigs. As per usual, there was a limitation of the technology and with each subsequent piece of technology that comes out later, the storage will increase as well. During my time with the tablet, I didn't run out of space, but if I were to put all my music on there and got some games and apps, I'd run into some trouble. It has one gig of RAM and runs at one gigahertz, gigahertz, which you do start to feel after some more moderate usage. You feel things should work faster, but this little guy just can't. The five megapixel rear camera works as well as you would expect it to. The UI is pretty cool and custom for the device. The front is a VGA camera that also technically works if for some reason you want to use this thing for Skype calls. Don't use these cameras. The tablet sports a removable 3080 milliamp battery with a supposed 120 hour standby time and 17 hour music time. In real life I got about two days use before really getting into it with apps. The charger itself is a Sony proprietary one and after looking into the specs I found out you can literally use the PSP charger which I've been using since instead of the cheap third party one my used unit came with. The tablet has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth version 2.1 and GPS. Connecting to Wi-Fi is easy if somewhat lengthy process due to the speed of the device. It connects to Bluetooth fine but does not support NFC. FM radio is what you'd expect. Headphones act as the antennae. Music and other media work just fine. Music, pictures, and videos have custom UIs specific to the Tablet P. Music puts a player at the top screen and the tiles of the album art on the bottom screen so that you can move them around and choose what you want to listen to. The video player has a video on the top and the controls on the bottom. I use MediaGo to put stuff on it, but since this is Android, this wasn't necessary. Apps are certainly where things go downhill. After first setting up the device, I couldn't download anything from the Play Store, not even updates. After an afternoon of research, I found that older devices are sometimes no longer supported and that it'd be up to Sony to give customer support. I found a workaround by just downloading APK files and making sure it was, say, an older version of Facebook that actually worked with Android version 3.2. A few days later, the Marketplace slash Google Play Store just started working and downloading apps just fine. I have no idea what changed, but more or less it worked from there on out. The web browser is terrible. While pages do load, you better make sure that's what you want to view because it does take a long time. YouTube on the browser can't maximize here and no apps are really optimized for the device because it's been discontinued and not really a factor when people are developing apps. There's some apps, but due to being an early version of Android, aren't compatible with many video and game apps like Twitch and the newer games. Daily Motion runs in a single screen mode, but crashes immediately when you try to dual screen it. Some games like TNA Impact run and look fine in dual mode, but in single screen mode, the device freaks out and becomes unplayable. Switching between the two screen modes sometimes takes restarting the app. Others like the Ratchet and Clank game crashes before loading. This was one of the first PlayStation 
PlayStation Mobile or PSM branded ready devices. Sadly, since it's been discontinued, I can't really say this is a plus. Pre-installed games like Crash Bandicoot and Pinball Heroes play well. Crash plays on the top screen with most of the controls on the bottom. The setup is great for platformers that uses few buttons, but for an FPS, that would be nigh impossible to play. At the end of the day, will it do? I already got rid of it as of uploading this video. While it boots and the media player function works fine, and there are some UI stuff that is kind of cool, there are other devices that serve this same purpose and are either twice as powerful, twice as fast, or just have more storage. The fact that it sometimes punishes you for trying to utilize the dual screens is a huge downside. There were many instances during my time with the Sony Tablet P where I found myself setting it down to do the same thing with my Sony Xperia Z3 or Sony Xperia Z2 tablet. That's all for now guys, Mondrame out.